Hi everyone, this is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. Today I want to talk about how you actually manifest your dream life. Um, so, so many people really want, they have this vision in their soul, coming from their soul, of what they imagine their life can be like. When they're not in fear, when they're in abundance and love and coming from connection. And a lot of times um, you message me, like all of you message me about this and you're like, how do you create your dream life? Like I'm, I'm working hard, I'm doing all these things and da, 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 like I'm doing, doing, doing. And it doesn't seem like it's actually working. Like I'm missing a step somewhere. Well, first off, I'm making a whole course about this, but I'm going to share in this podcast some things that I have been rec recently realizing. And they're just so exciting for me to share with you because I love giving you the downloads as I am coming into conscious awareness. Like I really believe everything comes back in this like feedback loop of, oh, I've been here before, but with different people in a different situation. Okay, what can I learn what can I learn now? What can I integrate now? And so recently in a lot of my experiences with people and situations, I have been recognizing my own blind spots of even for me, like what I was allowing to happen that was preventing me from creating situations that I actually really wanted. So straight up for you, like the things that really block most people from manifesting the life that they desire is what I call energy leaking. So, you know, some of you have said to me, like, Brittany, you're super grounded, but you talk very esoterically. Like, you're like, oh, it's energy and everything is this and that. And it's like, the more that, well, first off, this is just who I am because I really actually see things visually, energetically a lot of times. And I feel like most people, as they get more comfortable with their psychic abilities, you'll be able to understand what I'm saying more. But even if it, all of that makes no sense to you, it's fine. I will explain it to you in like grounded terms right now. We are, a lot of times people think that the value of who they are is the money that they have in their bank account. And yeah, that can be one val valuation of the energy. But really... I believe that our currency is our energy. So what does that mean? Like, it's the way that we use our energy in the world because that actually creates the opportunities for money to come into your life. That creates the opportunity for different forms of abundance to come into your life. And this is not only the energy that you're putting out into the world. So like what you're doing in the world and what you speak into the world and who you are in the world. So that's like one way of the energy flow. The other way of the energy flow is what you allow yourself to receive. How do you allow yourself to be treated? What standards do you have of who you associate with and share your energy? So what, who are your friends, your family? Basically, like, who do you mostly share your energy with? Because this affects your energy value. And what practices do you do on the daily that allow yourself to connect to your higher self, your, so your source, God, whatever you want to call it? Because when you have these daily practices, and it can be anything that brings you into this meditative state, that it fills you up with source energy and builds up your energy flow within your body, which adds to your energy vibration. And this can be stuff like meditation, yoga, dancing, running, exercise, whatever it is that brings you into this calm, relaxed, meditative state where you are feeling grounded in your body and you're allowing your energy, the energy to move through your body and you're like getting downloads and you're just feeling like, oh, like I'm a happy person in my life and like the energy is moving in a way that feels good. That adds to your energy currency. So, but so what, okay, this, I'm trying to bring it down to even more like specific because like what does energy currency mean? I really believe that each of us has a, it, we each have 
the amount of energy that can go through our body and that we can share in the world. And this energy, the capacity of this energy, like the more energy that you can have going through your body and the more you believe in yourself and the more that you have positive thoughts and positive beliefs, the more you're able to give this positive energy out into the world. And what you put out is what you get back. So the more you're able to build up this positive energy flow, through your belief systems, through your meditative practice, you're able to allow a lot more positive energy back into your life. And this can come in the form of financial abundance. This can come in the form of connection, love. There's many other types of abundance. There's, I I can go into that later, but one thing that I have realized lately is that I have a very strong meditative practice. I do my meditation in the morning. I journal. I do yoga. I exercise every day. So I am building up this flow of energy coming through my body and going outward in a positive way. Like I do my work to have positive energy. And I'm not saying that I start the day in positive energy. Some days I wake up and I'm in a bad mood, just like everyone else. But I do, my, I do my work in order to build up this positive energy flow and, you know, look at any subconscious negative beliefs and give them love and allow them to release and, you know, replace them with positive beliefs. Like, like this is my meditative practice. I just did this. So like right now, I'm in a high energy currency state so that I can share this positive energy with all of you. So that's great, right? Like that's... That's positive. But what I have (laughs) realized recently is that I'm like too nice of a person. Like in the sense that I was, I call it energy leaking. So there was, there's, there was things in my life where I didn't want to confront someone and it wasn't a fuck yes for me to say, like there were situations where I was saying yes to things with people And I actually meant no. It wasn't 100% yes for me. So I wasn't honoring myself. And I was giving my energy when I didn't actually want to. When you do this, this is what I realized. When I did this, I created frustration within my body. So I was giving positive energy initially, but then I got frustrated because I didn't want to give this person or this situation my energy. And then what happened was I got frustrated and it drained my energy. So like my energy currency went down. And then every time I thought of that person and that situation after that, I got frustrated again. So even after the situation passed, I was like, oh, why did I do that? I didn't actually want to do that. And then I would get frustrated and then my energy would go down again, right? So Recently, I had this huge download that, yes, you need to do your practice of building your positive energy up and building your positive belief system up so that the energy flowing through can like be this golden warm energy that you share with the world. And also, you need to have good boundaries and you need to speak up for your boundaries and you need to make sure that the energy that you're sharing with the world is being placed in a way where it feels good for you. Um, so what I realized for myself was like, wow, I have a lot of positive energy coming through my body and into the world. Um, but I need to be more selective on who I share this energy with. Like, do they actually deserve my energy? And what that means is like, does it feel good for me to give it to them? That's all I have to do is follow my intuition. I don't need to like logically think this and that. And that's the thing for me is I'm such a giver that I will just give, 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 give. But what I realized is that I need to give in situations where one, it feels really good, and two, it feels healthy. Like the energy is coming back to me in a way that is expansive. And it, and this is, this is the thing is like, when you're hanging out with friends that really have your back and really love you and have your best interests at heart, oh my gosh, like the energy is so expansive because you're giving to them, you're being supportive, they're giving back to you and it just keeps this really beautiful symbiotic loop that is just expanding, expanding, expanding and this is like what it's all about, you know? This is like the goal. But if you're giving to people, whether it's in a partnership, like your your partner, your boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, whatever, and the energy is not coming back in a way that's positive, 
or it doesn't feel good to give in that situation because you're, you're saying yes when you actually mean no, it's not helping anyone in the end. So a friend of mine actually said this to me the other day. He was like, you know, we think we're being kind when we call it like people pleasing, right? Like we think we're being kind when we're like, oh yeah, okay, I'll come, I'll come help you with this thing or yeah, you can use my whatever. Like, you know, we're giving our energy, time, resources, but when it's actually, it's not actually being kind to the person because in the end it backfires, either energetically or the situation will blow up. So I've had a lot of those types of situations recently and it's been so beautiful for me to recognize this because I have been in this type of situation before where I'm like over giving or I'm giving in a way that doesn't feel good for me. And I can feel intuitively because fe you can feel it in your body. You can feel it in your body when it doesn't feel like it's not meant to happen. And I think that that is so important to honor that intuition and honor that feeling because what I noticed is <laughs> I would say yes to something when I meant no. And it was a very small situation. But then with that person, they would just keep asking for more and more and more. And then it would blow up to the point where I would be like really resentful of what of them, the situation, what they're asking me for. And I would say like, hey, this is not okay. And like set really firm boundaries. And for the other person, they're confused because like I should have set those boundaries in the beginning, right? Because they're, they didn't understand that it wasn't okay along the way. And so this is where we need to honor ourselves. So if like someone's asking you like, hey, can I borrow your yoga mat? And you're like, actually, I don't want to let you borrow my yoga mat. That's like my favorite yoga mat. And like, you know, it's really special. I put a lot of energy into meditating and doing yoga here. And you're just like, yeah, okay, you can borrow it. And then they're like, actually, can I keep it for another week or two? And you're like, oh, I actually w use this every day, but like, ugh, I guess if they need it. And you're like, yeah, okay. And then they're like, actually, can I just keep it forever? And I just actually like dumped a whole cu like cup of coffee on it. So now it's staying. And then you freak out on them because you're like, I didn't want to let you borrow it in the beginning and da, 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 and now you've just like really ruined it and da, da, da. and then they're like, whoa, why didn't you just tell me that in the beginning? I would have just went and bought my own yoga mat. I thought this was like totally okay. So there's, um, there's two things happening. One, there is our needing to honor ourselves in the beginning of our boundaries and what actually feels good for us. And then what I also noticed, and this is something that I <laughs> has been a hard, a hard wake up call I'm like doing this like slap in the face motion because that's kind of how it feels recently is, you know, I was raised in a community where I would consider it a cult because when you left, the re it's a re religious community that I grew up in. I grew up as a Jehovah's Witness. And when you are in, I call it consider it a cult because when I left the religion, the religion banned my entire family from speaking to me and program them to believe that that is the way that I will come back into the religion and my soul will be saved in the end. So they will, none of my family speaks to me. And to me, like, it's a cult when you, when you can't leave, when you're not allowed to leave, or when you, if you do leave, you're like banished from the community. That's what I consider a cult. But anyways, within the community growing up, like the religious leaders, the system was very controlling. But the thing I don't talk about a lot um, is that it actually from a community standpoint, we were programmed to always be giving. And the system itself was built so that we were all constantly giving to each other. And so I grew up in what I would consider like this collective community. So like everyone was helping each other all the time. If someone needed something, then they would, everyone, like it wasn't just one person, you would have like 10 people offering to help you. And oh my gosh, that is such a good feeling because one, it doesn't put so much pressure on just one individual. It's like a whole community is supporting everyone. And so even if that one person can't show up, there will be nine other people behind them that's offering to help you, right? So that's, that was really beautiful. And also it was this very embodied feeling that like everyone has my back, you know, like, and also the the lived experience of I give and it keeps coming back to me in an expansive way. So there was so many times with my family growing up where we were always giving to people. Like I, we always had people living with us. My mom was always making food for people who needed it in our, in our community. You know, like it was a joy to 
do act of service, acts of service for people in our community because we loved them. And we showed up for, we showed up for each, each other like we were family. Like this was my spiritual family and they actually called it that. Like like they called each other like brothers and sisters. Um, and that was really beautiful because when I was seven years old, my dad got cancer and he, and he was a construction worker at the time. So in California, we didn't have medical uh, coverage. So we weren't even sure if we could like pay for his chemotherapy, his treatment. And um, basically we were very poor, didn't have medical coverage, wasn't sure if my dad was even going to survive uh, the treatment. And he was in the hospital for like six months or a year. I mean, I was young, so I don't really remember exactly the time frame. But I do remember that my mom ended up going to work full time. Before that, she was a housewife, so she never worked. And there, I have two sisters, so there's three of us. And after school, every single day, there would be one of the people from our church that would pick us up from school and then bring us to someone's house in the church, in the community that had kids. And so we, and then we would get fed, they would give us clothes. Um, it was just basically like we were fully supported by the community. And there were so many times where people would gift us with money, like food, anything that we needed, it would suddenly appear on our doorstep, like as this anonymous gift from our church community. And that was so beautiful as a child, because, you know, like I, up until that point, my family was one of the bigger, I don't want to compare, but like my family was always giving within the community, right? So like we had a lot of abundance. We might, might, might not have had like so much financial abundance, but we, my mom was always growing food and baking and cooking. And my dad was a construction worker, so he could fix everything. And he was always helping people. And we always had people living with us that needed a place to stay for a short time. So we were giving, so the ener energy currency was going out. And then I saw from a very beautiful experience of being a, a little kid and like receiving so much from this community. So like allowing the energy to come back and amplify. And for me, that has just been built into me vibrationally that like when you give, it comes back. And so as I become an adult, I would love to have this community with like, this is the kind of community that I want to have my kids into. Like, obviously not the religious cult part of it, but like a community that is supportive and uh, giving and just like people who have your back and are showing up because they love you. Not because they're tallying something in their head of how much they're doing for you so then you owe them. Not because they're making you, you know, something like projecting their stuff onto you of like saving. They like just, they're just like genuinely wanting to give out of unconditional love. So that's what I grew up in. And that's what I choose to, that's the vibration that I am in. So if you know me personally, like I have been building community since I left my religion at, at 24. So 10 years I have been out here on the ground building community wherever I go. So this can be in the form of connecting people. I always have a place that I can host people. Like I always have extra bedrooms. People are staying with me, um, hosting events for the community and really involved in like the local community of whatever country I'm in. Like um, the people who are actually living there, <laughs> not just us white people coming through. Like I'm always connecting with the locals and asking them what do they need and how can we as a foreigner community support you? So like organizing events to do fundraisers, connecting the foreigners with the locals in a way that is like uplifting everyone involved. And I do this out of unconditional love because this is who I am and it brings me so much joy to give. Not because I'm telling like, okay, these people owe me this and yeah, I did this for you last week so you better help me with this. No, I'm doing this because this is who I am and I saw from a very young age how beautiful this is and this is, this is like w who I choose to be in the world, like vibrationally. This is my energy currency of what I'm giving out and I have been consistently attempting to create this community over the last 10 years in many different countries, and the latest one has been on Copenhagen for the last five, almost five years I've been there. Um, and I have a community space on Copenhagen called Remote Collective, and like the whole idea behind it was to build this kind of community because I wanted to 
have my kids into this kind of community. So that was my only selfish reason was I would love to build a community where we are all supporting each other. We all have each other's back and we can all raise our kids together. So like I, my body feels safe to have my kids into the situation. And what I encountered was people, this is something I, I, it's hard for me to put into words because it's not my lived experience, but from what my friends have told me is that like the way that I grew up is so alien to everyone else. Like for most, I would say like 90% of people in the world, they grew up with just like their silo of like their parents, maybe some extended family, but they didn't have this like community feeling, this tribal feeling of an extended community that really has your back and shows up for you. And so, yeah, they're not collective beings. They don't, they don't have a lived experience of what it's like to give and receive from a community standpoint. So I'm out here like giving, giving, giving. And the thing is, the thing, the thing is within this system that was built within my religion was that the framework, the actual like matrix, everything's a matrix, everything's a system. And it's just like, is the system benefiting the people? Well, from a from a brainwashing like religious sense no it was not benefiting us but from a community supportive sense it was so i understand why my soul chose to be born into that so that i could feel what it was like for a community to support each other but my point is that because the system supported everyone giving to each other like out of abundance and also out of unconditional love so without expecting anything in return the system created this symbiotic loop where everything was going like back and forth, back and forth. And it didn't need to be in the same way. It, w it was just energy and money and food and community and support. It was just like everything anyone needed at any moment was provided for by the community. And we would have like, it, it was really beautiful because there would be times where like we would have like, meetings where people were like okay this person really needs this how can we show up for them as a community so sometimes like a small group of us there was 150 people in each congregation is what they call it um so there would be like maybe five or ten of us that they would call it they bring together a committee is what they called it and they would actually bring up like okay this you know single mom really needs some support right now she's sick she has kids and how can we support her as a community and then like people would be like assigned to go support for her and like you know bring food for her every single week like a meal plan was set up or some financial assistance was given like whatever was needed and so this is how i think and this is how i show up in my community but what i realized recently was that you need more than one person for this to work in a community. So I'm doing this on the island, or I have been, and I'm not blaming anyone, but if you've never been in this situation, what I started to realize from a lived experience is that I would provide a place to stay in my house and you know connections within the community, abundance in many different ways, and people would just take. And that's where it would end for that person or that situation. And I was like, this is not expansive. And I'm not saying I wanted it, the energy to come back to me. I'm like, expand that energy beyond in the community. Like, let's keep going. Let's like, but it needs to be a whole system in place. It can't just be one person holding this vibration and giving, giving, giving. And so what I realized recently is I have I am like rich energetically. I have so much source energy coming through me, but I was energetically leaking this to people who were not supporting my mission of creating this community. And a lot of this was happening subconsciously because I didn't realize, I did, wasn't realizing any of this consciously, so I don't blame anyone. And I also, a lot of it I hold responsibility for myself and I'm trying to be softer on myself for this because I was like, Oh, why am I doing this? Because I could have like put all this energy over here and like built out something that was actually helping the world in a better place. And that's what I'm doing right now with Daria. I'm building out such beautiful ways to make impact and support all of you online um, because I feel like this is actually a better way for me to funnel my energy right now. And the reason why I'm bringing this up with you is one, I invite you as a collective, to be more of this community giving, to, to ask yourself, who is my community? 
can this be my friends, my blood family, my chosen family, work colleagues, co-workers. I don't know why I always say work colleagues. Co-workers. Whoever it is that is in your community, like you can write these people down. I have lists of people that are in my, like my soul family, people that are in this community. Like I really organize these people and I think about it very consciously and ask yourself, like how can I support them? And how can I show up for them in a way that is unconditional? Because the thing that I realized for myself, and this is something, <laughs> wow, I am so grateful for the universe, is that I continuously have abundance coming into my life. So I'm not like, writing down on a piece of paper, I helped this person and then they need to help me this. Something that I realized is that when you give energy unconditionally out in the universe, yeah, you can drain your energy in the sense that you can like leak it by giving it to people who do not have your best interests at heart or are just going to take it and keep asking for more. But that's a, that's a learning lesson that we all have to do, right? But for me, what I've realized is that if I'm giving my energy and, it, and it's healthy and it's like going to the people who need it and it's like, even if those people cannot give it back, the universe will keep giving me more abundance, energy, resources, money. And so I am not ever worried about what I'm giving because I'm giving out of abundance and I'm receiving more abundance, always. Wealth, connection, love, support, family, community. I have so much abundance to share and the universe is just keep supplying me with more. So if you are like, well, I don't want to help these people because they can't help me back. One, that is a fucked up way to think because that's just not how the world works. But if it feels, oh no, that is how the world works and that's why the world's fucked up. <laughs> but okay, this is the fine line between having good boundaries and giving unconditionally. If it feels energetically aligned for you to give to someone personally, a community, a nonprofit, volunteering, whatever it is, if it feels aligned and it feels really yummy in your body, don't worry about whether the energy is going to come back to you from that specific source. When you give unconditionally and out of love and you are feeling aligned in the energy of where it's going, like it feels good for you to give, just trust that the universe is going to supply you with an even more abundance of energy, connections, wealth, love, support. And you can even demand this from the universe. Like, I demand that whatever I give comes back to me a thousandfold energetically. It's all energy, right? And that's okay. You can demand that. That's a beautiful thing to demand from the universe because the universe is abundant. The universe has so much to give. It's more we need to allow ourselves to receive. That's what I've realized. We need to allow ourselves to receive this abundance and feel worthy of it. And sometimes our blockage around feeling worthy of it is that the energy flow needs to move a little bit. And so if you're feeling like you're asking a lot from the universe right now, this is in my course I'm about to release, if you're feeling like you're asking a lot from the universe, that's beautiful. Well, while you're waiting for the, yourself to receive all these beautiful things that are coming from the universe, and they will come, they always come, you can give energetically as a way to say to the universe, like, hey, keep giving me more because I'm going to put this energy, some of this energy, yeah, it's going to go to myself and the things I'm building out and my own security and what I need in the world, and that's important. That's how you keep going. <laughs> and also part of this, I'm going to get back out in the community, out, out in the universe in a way that's beautiful and expansive. And that is a sign that you are in abundance energetically. So you are saying to the universe, I trust you to give me more and more and more energetically. And I trust you so much that while I'm waiting to receive from you, I'm going to spend some of my energy currency out in the universe. So this can be volunteering, random acts of kindness. This can be, it doesn't have to be giving monetarily. It can be, but it also can be using your energy in some way by helping connect people that need it, by volunteering, like using your time and energy to help others. And I think the fine line that I have realized recently is that you just need to feel good giving. Like the energy of when you're actually giving needs to feel good in your body. If it feels frustrating for you, if it feels like something's off intuitively, do not give in that situation. 
because that's not going to be expansive. That's not going to come back to you from the universe in a way that you want. It's not even going to help the person, even if on the surface it looks like it's going to help the person. And the example of this is I've <laughs> had so many times where people reach out to me and they're like, hey, can you help me with this job opportunity? Or hey, can you give me some money? And in the past, I was doing my best to help them. And what I realized recently, but some, some of the times it felt good to do it, like energetically, and some of the times I felt frustrated and I couldn't figure out why. And what I realized recently is that all of us are playing this game of life, like it's this video game, and we have different lessons that our soul wants us to learn here in this video game of life. And sometimes, because I have so much abundance, I was giving to this person when in reality they needed to go out and learn the lesson of whatever it was. Like I was helping them skip a step of learning the lesson. So even though on the surface it seemed like I was helping them, they were going to come back around to this needing to learn this lesson later on. So I actually wasn't helping them. I was delaying them from growing in the way that their soul actually wants them to grow. And how do we determine whether this is their opportunity for growth versus, yeah, I want to help them? How does it feel in your body when someone off asks you for help? If it feels good in your body to share your energy, your connection, your abundance in some way, then do it. If it doesn't feel good in your body, there is a reason for that. Your higher self, your soul is telling you like, hey, this is not actually what we want to do right now. So these are things that I've realized recently. And <laughs> something else I realized too is that it's super important to clean up your energy. So if, so if you're giving energetically to someone and it doesn't feel good anymore, and it's like the situation is continuing, it's really important to speak up and say, hey, actually, this doesn't work for me anymore. This doesn't feel good in my body. I don't want to do this energetically anymore. And then you have to let go of what happens in the situation after that. So say you like you offered to help someone, um, but it didn't feel good. There was, there was some weird energy attached to it that wasn't clean. And then you started to be conscious of this and you're like trying to get out of the situation. So you're like speaking up, you're setting your boundaries and the person is not honoring your boundaries and it's not, it's like they're fighting you back energetically because they, they want to suck on the energy resources, abundance, whatever it is. You have accomplished your mission by speaking up for what you need energetically. You have said to the universe, this is my standard. I do not want to put my energy in the situation anymore. It is okay if the situation, it doesn't actually matter what happens in the situation, in the, like, in the physical reality after that. What matters is that you spoke up to the universe. So I had this situation happen recently where I don't want to go into the details because it's still ongoing, but I realized that my energy, I realized that my energy was being placed in a situation that was actually draining for me. And I thought that there was no way out of the situation. I thought, oh, I just have to deal with this. And then I got into my place of power. I did my manifesting. I built up my energy. And then I had this realization of like leaking energy. So then I spoke up to the person and said, hey, this doesn't work for me anymore. These are my boundaries and this is what I need. And the person freaked out on me and started projecting and like trying to make, trying to get me in a fight with them. And I, again, that's another way to drain your energy and keep you hooked energetically. And I said, I will not engage with this. This is my boundaries. Please honor my boundaries. And the situation is still continuing. So what I find super interesting is that it doesn't actually matter to me in the end what happens in the situation. What matters to me is that I spoke up for my energy. Because the reason why I say that is like, one, if I had just said nothing, the situation would have just, it would have been me feeling disempowered energetically and draining my energy until the situation ended. Two, if I attach to the outcome that I want, then again, I can potentially drain my energy if I don't get what I want in the 3D. But three, if I just say to the universe, no, I don't like this. This doesn't meet my standard anymore. I, I, I take back my energy. No, I will not engage with you. No, I will not fight with you. 
and say the situation needs to play out a little bit longer, but if I stay in my high energy, my abundance mindset of the universe has my back and is fully supporting me, it can only work out energetically in a positive way. And I felt this because after I spoke my boundaries, I woke up the next morning and I had so much energy in the universe. I was like, yeah, oh my gosh. Like I feel like I could go to the gym and run a marathon and da da da, da. And I was like, wow, because every time I thought of this person before, my energy was being drained. I was feeling frustrated because I hadn't spoken up for myself. And so everything is about, everything really is a game with yourself and the universe of how much you value yourself, of what your standards are, of what you're willing to speak up for yourself. It doesn't matter what other people think about you. It doesn't matter. I, I know it feels like it matters in the moment, but what matters the most is that you value yourself and that you know who you are, and that you are willing to stand up for who you are and stand up for your value and speak up and set boundaries. And also that you trust the universe, God, source, whatever, that it will work out. And you put energy, whatever we focus on expands. So I have been, oh my gosh, I have been meditating, I have been dancing, I have been getting juicy about the way that I would like the situation to turn out. And also, it's like I trust, like I am the child, the universe is the adult, all I have to do is receive and be in this warm, yummy energy and just trust that the universe is going to take care of it. I don't have to do it. A lot of it is we need to get out of the way. Our physical mind wants to step in and like fight the situation and logically figure out how best it can conclude. You can do that. I've done that a lot in my life because I was scared, because I didn't trust the universe, because whatever, whatever, whatever. I was programmed to do it like this. And now what I do is just set my standard, do my meditative practice to build up my own energy, demand from the universe to protect me and provide for me, and let it go. And focus my energy on other things that actually bring me joy. In my last podcast, I talked about how the download I've been getting recently is like, it is such a profound, beautiful thing that we are alive in these bodies in this time, like in this lifetime where we are allowed to experience this beautiful <laughs> roller coaster that is existence. And it's really about enjoying it every step of the way and creating situations for yourself and speaking up for yourself so that you can feel the best in your body in every given moment. If at the end of the day you are honoring yourself and you are setting your boundaries, that is the biggest impact you can make in the world because you being a kind person, a loving person, and also being a kind and loving person to yourself first, which means no people pleasing. That doesn't mean you're not giving. That means you're giving out of abundance. So one more thing I want to talk about related to this is giving out of abundance, energy of abundance versus the energy of scarcity. So a lot of people have not done their meditative practice. They're not connected to source. They don't feel good in their bodies. They don't believe in themselves. They don't trust the universe. And so they're running around giving to people hoping to get some of those things filled. So I will love you because I want you to love me because I don't love myself. <laughs> so I need you to validate that for me, please. Thank you. Um, that's not going to work. <laughs> or, you know, I'm going to give to you and say that I'm your friend and show up for you, but I actually want X, Y, and Z in return. It's not out of abundance because I want something in return. So this is where I'm saying to you, like, you need to take care of yourself first because if you don't leak your energy and you keep your energy for yourself, you will be in energy abundance. And if you are doing your practices to connect to source, you will be in energy abundance. It's just a, like a default. And if you take this course I'm about to put out, it will, it will also really help you get into ener energy abundance because I'm realizing that what comes naturally to me is a, is a foreign concept to a lot of people because I realize I was raised in a community of abundance. So like from a lived experience, I have had so much abundance in my life in all different ways. Like one thing that's also really beautiful is, 
after my dad got out of the hospital, he survived, he was good. Um, he started his own construction company. And so we went from like having absolutely no money, like living on food stamps and, you know, receiving from the community in the church to living <laughs> in a mansion in a gated community in one of the most expensive neighborhoods in Sacramento. And so we had a lot of financial abundance. And for me, that was so beautiful because that was just one more way that we could give to our community. And I, so I have experienced all different forms of community and I've also experienced what it's like to receive. So I, it's like I know the, you know, like the gas tank, like if it's full or empty, I know when it's full. I know when I'm giving from a place of fullness and abundance. And I know when I'm giving from a place of scarcity. Um, and for me, I, <laughs> I have so much abundance in my life that it's very rare for me to give from a place of scarcity. And usually what happens is I give from a place of scarcity if I am giving too much to people that are just leaking my energy and taking because this is where it needs to be a symbiotic feedback loop. And so I recently have gotten a lot more protective of my energy. I actually sat down the other day and I said, where does it not feel good for me to give my energy right now? And I sent out a lot of messages that were very nice, but very firm of just like, I'm sorry, I can't do this with you anymore. Or I'm sorry, I, don't, I do not want this situation anymore. Or I don't want this person to come over to my house anymore. Like, it's just so beautiful because they were all little things. But they, after I sent those messages, I felt so much more in my power because I called my power back. And it helped me to be more of a, in a place of abundance energetically. And so for you, how does this apply? How can we use this in our life? When you're giving, I really want you to ask yourself, is this coming from scarcity energetically or is this coming from abundance? You'll know if it's coming from scarcity if you have expectations of what you want to get back. Do I actually want this person? Like, if you're in a relationship with someone, do you love them because you demand X, Y, and Z back from them? Or are you just like, I am complete in my love for myself and I just love this person. And of course they treat me well and they're a nice person and it's fun to be around them and da, da, da. Like it's good to have healthy exchange of energy, but do I need something core within myself fulfilled by their energy or their attention or whatever they're giving me? Because if you are in a dynamic with someone out of scarcity, like they say, it's basically it's not going to turn out well. They say like the way that you start a relationship is usually energetically is usually how the relationship ends. So if you're going into a relationship out of scarcity, then the relationship is, it's, it's really hard unless you're consciously aware of this and you're doing therapy and you're working with coaches to transform this energetically while it's happening. Usually this is why people break up eventually because the same loops pop up and they realize, wow, this is just not okay. And I didn't actually get my core needs met from this person because I need to give myself these core needs. Like that is the opportunity for growth here. Um, <laughs> I'm saying all of this is like, I have been there and it's taken me years of therapy, my own coach, like receiving help from coaches and my own meditative practice for me to get to a place where I feel safe in my body, I feel abundant within myself, and I really, really love myself. Because for me, like, the abundance that I had growing up was in community and stuff, but I didn't have an abundance of support that was clean energy. So a lot of the love and support that came from my parents was, um, my mom, she gave a lot of love and support, but when I started to not want to be in the religion anymore, this is when that went away, because that's when I realized it was conditional because she really is not okay with me not being part of this religion. And with my dad growing up, it was conditional, like, from birth. Like, I had to do things in order f for him to feel like I was worthy of his love. So I had to work through my own programs that, from a standpoint of love, like, I can give myself love. I'm very worthy of receiving love from myself, but just more of, like, is it safe to receive love from others or do they want something from me? Do they want to control me? Do they want to take from my abundance? Or do they just love me <laughs> for me and all of my different forms and you know, accept me for who I am in all of my different forms? And do they honor me and create safety for me? Are they like, wow, it's so beautiful that Brittany set boundaries. Thank you for 
what you have offered me and I really honor you setting your boundaries of what you need right now. That for me is people that I'm gonna have in my life going forward. If someone is trying to push their agenda on me or take from me, Brittany Scorpio energy is cleaning that shit up. <laughs> and it's really beautiful because I feel so much energy coming back to me recently. And I am giving this energy towards building out these courses and different online things. And I just decided yesterday I'm going to Burning Man, like officially, like it's been in the vortex for a while. Wow. And going back to the States is such a beautiful thing. Like, of course, it's like on the one hand, terrifying for me because I haven't been, I've been home to the East Coast. I used to live in New York City. Like the last time I was there was in 2020, but I haven't been home to the West Coast where I grew up uh, in probably like eight years, maybe 10. Um, so to go back and visit some family who are willing to see me and also to just be in the energy of the vibration of my home, my actual home where I grew up because from an energy standpoint, your soul chose to be born in the place that you were born. So when you go back and you re revisit that, you are one, gaining a lot of energy and also your, <laughs> your whatever core traumas you have, they're gonna be revisited. So for me, that's why it's a little scary because I'm like, I have worked through a lot of this, but I know one of the biggest ways to, um, to process any negative beliefs that are still there or any, any trauma that still needs to be processed is I need to go back to the source of where it started. So yeah, that feels really exciting. And also just going to Burning Man is something I've always wanted to do. So that feels like a dream come true. And then I'm gonna visit a bunch of my friends who have conscious communities all along the West Coast and run retreats and play parties and just do a lot of really beautiful things and like connect to the community that I'm from. I'm from California, which is one of the biggest spiritual communities in the world. And yet most of the people that are you beautiful f like listeners are not from America. It's like Europe. Europe is like the biggest um, community that I'm currently reaching. And I'm really excited to reach not just all of you beautiful selves, but the people that are from my hometown, like the people that are from my, my country and my state and where I'm my home. I think there's something really important to that. So if you are in a similar situation, I feel like a lot of my friends right now are like revisiting home stuff this year. It's like a lot of us clearing up some of our karma that we need to and healing traumas. And I just think it's like, wow, it's such a like kudos to you. Like you're so brave for doing that because I'm feeling that, <laughs> that feeling of how it feels to really face this. And it's like, I know in my soul, it's going to be good for me. And also I'm like, I'm scared. <laughs> But I also have tons of commu community support, soul family that are helping me and supporting me every step of the way. And that makes me feel so good. Um, I think I'm going to end it there. I have a lot more I want to say, but I hope that this was helpful for you. Like this is something that's been really, really a big thing for me recently, um, especially like all the things that I have been going through. And it just makes me feel more of a badass. I'm like it's okay to make people upset if you are honoring yourself. If you're doing it in a nice way and you're just like setting your boundaries, you're going to piss some people off and you need to be okay with that. And you, as long as you are in alignment with yourself and you're honoring the energy flow of what feels good in your body and you're speaking from kindness and from love, you are not in control and you are not responsible for how other people, ooh, my computer fell, how other people receive that or respond to it because that was a big part of why I have had a hard time like in the past speaking up for my boundaries was because I was like, oh, I don't want to hurt their feelings or, you know, like I don't, I'm oh, sorry, my ca camera's doing weird things. I don't want to like piss anyone off. Um, and yeah, fuck that. I've let that go. <laughs> And I think that is really how you get to the next level energetically in your life. Like if you are like, ah, oh, why can't I get to this thing that I want? Financial abundance, love, like whatever it is that you're trying to manifest right now, part of it is probably because you're not owning your energy currency of what's going out and what's coming back in. And like protecting your energy. Really, all of us need, especially a lot of you who are listening to me, you are star seeds like me, like your soul came here to like hold this really high vibration in this lifetime so that we can make the world a better place. Um, that energy is really yummy to everyone around you. 
And if you're not protecting that energy, you're not going to be able to fulfill your soul's mission. You're going to be draining your energy on like little situations and people who are not giving it back. And we're going to say a big fuck that <laughs> because it's no longer time for that. It's time to call. You can even say to the universe, I call back all energy to myself. I call back all energy to myself. I call back all energy to myself that is needed right now. And whatever energy needs to come back to you that is not going in a place that it should will come back to you. And you will start noticing that people who were, this is, oh, this is a really interesting thing. People that were actually draining your energy and you didn't realize it will start reaching out to you after that because they're trying to hook back into your energy. So if you say this to the universe, I call back all energy to myself. I call back all energy to myself that is not being put in positive places right now, that's not being put in healthy places. I call back all energy to myself that is mine. You might start having people reach out to you that you haven't thought of in a while, that you haven't spoken to, maybe some exes, ex-partners, because they're they were actually draining your energy, whether you realize it or not, and they're trying to hook back in. So it's your opportunity after that to no longer engage because even when you engage with them, you can engage to set boundaries, but if you engage and like continue a energetic connection, then you're gonna just redrain your energy after that. And a lot of you have been reaching out to me and asking like, okay, I understand that I meant to do this big mission in this lifetime, but I don't know what it is. And that's why I've been really enjoying giving all of you human design readings. I just put a shout out on Instagram yesterday because I'm going to be offline for a couple of weeks on, at Burning Man. So if you want to get a human design reading, this is literally human design is how does the energy move through your body and what is your soul's mission? So it's like, how do you specifically, how can you protect your energy? Where can you put your energy where it's placed the best and it's going to come back the most abundantly? And also it literally says on your human design, what is your soul's mission in this lifetime? And I find that so fascinating and so energizing to like give this to someone because I know that it's life changing. It was life changing for me to receive. And you know, human design was channeled into this time, into our society in 1987. And it's only recently becoming like mainstream, like normal for people to look into and to study. And I, I think it's because we're finally ready for it as a collective, like our conscious, like our collective conscious vibration has raised high enough that we can understand it and apply it. And I'm here for all of it. <laughs> okay, that's it. I'm going to go. I hope you have a beautiful day and protect your energy. Call all the energy back to you that is no longer, it's not serving. Call, call all unhealthy, all energy that's being put in unhealthy places. Call it back. Call it back. You got this. You got this. You got this. I will see you in the next episode. Bye.